We praise y'all. Every one of you, welcome. This is bold for April 12th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. Going into day five of counting of the Omer and actually going into the seventh day, the final day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yeah, yeah, As the, right. the sun is still up, we're looking through the, the blinds and still can yeah. see the sun. Mm -hmm. So um, we're not quite down uh, at sundown, but by the time we leave the broadcast, we will be in the first day, That's I'm right. sorry, the last day of Unleavened Bread. Yes. So we pray that as you have uh, journeyed through Unleavened Bread that you have done as Holy Spirit has said, That's and right. that is to drive out, you know, ask him to drive out any of the leaven, the error, the sin, That's the right. lawlessness that is in your life. Amen. So we're going to get right into it because we have some ground to cover tonight and we want to give you time uh, to ask questions and have some really good conversation about where we are in this time and what the Father is speaking. Amen. So um, first of all, let's pray and then we're going to go forth in uh, the communication. Father, Amen. we thank you. We praise thank you. We you, magnify Father. you right now thank on this you, day that you've Lord, made. Lord, Lord, Lord. Father, we thank you that this day that we'll never see again, but we thank you that you've allowed yes. us to see this day yes, and to Father. worship you and to praise you as we come together as a corporate body yes, to hear what you have to say on this day of the unleavened bread as we yes, are entering to the last phase of the unleavened bread. Thank you, yes. Father, that we that you allowed us to, to drive out the lawlessness, you, uh, that you uh, allowed us to drive out the sin and the leaven that was in our life, yes, Father. Father. And I know it's an everyday situation, everyday thing that we have to be cognizant, we have to be mindful to, to keep the leaven out of our lives, exactly. Father, because we know yes, that amen. leaven separates us from you, and yes, we don't want to be separated from you, Father. Yes, we amen. thank you for your healing virtue. We thank you yes. for your deliverance. We thank you yes, for everything amen. that you have to offer. For you are the great I am. You are all in all, Father. And we thank you and we praise you. Yes, now, Father, as we gather tonight, we thank you even ahead of time for the word yes, that's Father. going to come forth. We thank you that we get to we get to hear this word as a corporate body. Yes, and we Father. get to say, I mean and I mean. We get to, to declare this word and Father, we get to walk it out. We yes, praise Father. you and we magnify you, Father, for every person, even those that are coming back to to view the, the the replay. Father, I thank you that it's going to be even stronger then. The Father, that your anointing is going to be upon the word. Your yes. glory will be upon everything that happens on tonight in this Breath of Life discipleship training. We thank you and we praise you. We magnify and we lift you up. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Apostle. We praise Yahweh for each and every one of you. We say welcome, welcome, welcome to both. Yes, yes, Again, yes. we're entering into the last day of Unleavened Bread, the seventh day, That's right. That's and right. also entering into the fifth day of counting of the Omer from, from first fruits to Shabbat, okay? Right. Right. So uh, tonight we're going to uh, give you the communications. Make sure you make note of it and that you're availing yourself to the communication. Right. So let's jump right in. Remember, every Tuesday morning, we are meeting for prayer. Right. Uh, but if we will advance to the second slide, let's go ahead and go right into this. Because for the next few weeks, we will be meeting every day. We've already That's started. Right. And we want to say thank you to everybody who's been joining thank in. You. And yeah. so we are, are counting up to Shavuot. Remember that Pentecost is at sundown on Saturday, May 27th through mm -hmm. sundown on Sunday, May 28th. So we will be gathering on Sunday, May 28th for our Shavuot mm -hmm. holy set apart gathering uh, with Yahweh. Amen. Mm -hmm. So um, remember every day we are praying. There's the dial-in number. No access code is mm -hmm. needed. And so if right. you are a part of uh, the family and friends are uh, your subscriber uh, to Bolim today? You received a link to uh, the the assignments for the prayer, and so if for any reason you didn't get the link or what have you, or maybe you having trouble with the link, 
first of all, please let us know. Reach out to us mm -hmm. at info at bolim.info. And then also you can go to bolim.info and you will see under the banner of 50 days of prayer that the document is there in PDF form. So you can go and see when you are assigned, when your nation is assigned to pray. And also because the question came up, what should I be praying during the 50 days? Mm -hmm. And so you will see there uh, the uh, information about um, uh, what you should be praying every week. That's right. And so we give the... Um, uh, the focus of the prayer for the week because it is a lot of ground to cover. That's right. That's and right. so instead of giving you a daily guide, we give you a weekly guide. That's Another right. reason we do that, to be honest, is because in the time of Shavuot, it is a weekly, mm -hmm. um, it's a daily count. But remember, the scripture says that there'll be seven weeks between right. the first fruits right. and Shavuot. So we're trying to keep you in that mindset about the and, week. And let me say this, we thank God, we really praise Yahweh for uh, Prophetess Anderson and Prophetess Wright for taking the charge in the, right now for these past couple of days for praying over our nations and, yes. and giving us what Yahweh has given to them to give to us Amen. so that we can walk out this counting of the Omer all the way as we count up to Shavuot. So, you know, whenever you get a chance, just we praise Yahweh for both of them for, and Amen. also for those that are going to be uh, that, that will be praying, all those nations that will be up to praying these next couple of weeks. Amen. Amen. So we praise Yahweh for, for giving us a strong send off, a strong praise start, Yahweh. a strong start so that we could finish strong. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, praise Yahweh, Apostle, and thank you for that. It is our honor to serve. I know I, I speak on Prophet's rights behalf as well as our honor to serve. And I'm telling you that fine tuning that we got this morning, my Yah today, yeah, praise yeah. Yahweh for that with Prophetess Wright. It was really a powerful word. And for me as a musician, as someone who understands the importance of things being in tune, you know, uh, and it is so important that we're in tune and uh, with Yahweh in his word, in his spirit. Amen. Amen. So, you know, like I said today, you can have the most beautiful piano, most expensive piano, but if it's out of tune, yeah. my, my. Hey, we have that wonderful organ mm -hmm. at Bolin, but if That's it's right. not worked on it's on right. annual it's basis, right. it's not even annual, it's not annual. Yes, exactly. You know, it just depends. depends. And what I love about the organ is one time when I came and the gentleman was working on it, he had some oil. I That's was like, right. child, right. I oil. said, y'all had me at hello. I mean, <laughs> you going to get some oil? You need the oil to tune the organ, to get the organ right? Yeah. Why? Because we need the oil. So That's I could right. so see us as Yahweh's instruments needing his oil. So that fine tuned word on today really blessed, challenged, and changed That's me. Right. I pray it blessed, challenged, and changed you. Remember, you, you can go back and listen to the recordings of those. And y'all, y'all keep praying for us and keep on standing with us. The, the goal is for all of these things to eventually be an audio in a in a station where you can go and you can listen to it. You don't have to get a That's text right. message That's or anything right. like that. You can just go and listen to the audio. So these are things we are praying into and walking into and making sure we're using the latest and greatest technology to deliver those things to you. So thank you again for joining the prayer. Listen, stay in the race, stay in what Yahweh has given us for these 50 days. You will be blessed, you will be challenged, and you will be uh, right. changed by the power of the Holy right. Spirit. That's right. Listen, That's right. speaking of prayer, that's Join right. Teacher Carol Patterson That's for right. the Worship and Word Warrior Prayer Watch nightly at 12 midnight. Listen, that includes tonight. That's so right. if you're up tonight at 12 midnight, you're like, Father, why am I up? Per adventure, perhaps. Yes. You probably saw that word per adventure in the, in the King James Version. Yes, perhaps, in other words, you have been called to that prayer watch. So right. if you sense a calling or if you just want to go on the line to see if Yahweh is calling you to that prayer watch, I'm sure Teacher Patterson won't mind. Come on out to the, the Worship and Word Warrior Prayer Watch at midnight. Amen. Amen. And listen, so were strangers, orphans, widows, emergency relief, visionary Elder Daphne Mitchell is still going forth with the outreach for the spring, the summer, winter, fall, whatever it is that needs to be done for our homeless community. She is up and at it. So please, please, if you have not yet, donate to this um, this push and this rally and this campaign. 
uh, that she's doing at this time. But not only that, as you see on the slide, ask how you can give a seed monthly and please direct those seeds directly to um, these, these ministries. Uh, donate today and with PayPal, Zelle, Cash App, or you can mail in your seed. Amen? Amen. Also, we wanted to just remind you of the dates of the appointed times. We know that all of the, the first three have passed, but we are keeping them up there so that you can go back and you can read. We know that the first three have passed. Um, well, we're the excuse me, the first, uh, the first and third have passed, and then one of the dates for unleavened bread have passed, and we're going into the last of unleavened bread. But we just want to keep this on your mind and keep the context and perspective of it so that as you go from year to year harvest to harvest, you will understand the flow of Yahweh's appointed times. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so uh, this is the last time we'll show this um, uh, uh, calendar because we, by Shabbat, we will have passed the dates that we wanted to point out. But remember that as the sun goes down tonight, we're going into a Sabbath. And then when the sun goes down tomorrow night, we're out of the Sabbath. Remember, according to Leviticus 23, that the first and the last day of unleavened bread are a Sabbath, okay? And so then on Friday, we won't be in a Sabbath until sundown. So you have that, that time of preparation at sundown tomorrow to sundown on Friday. So make sure your gas, you know, whatever you need to do, get your gasoline, whatever you need to do, your groceries and all of that. Um, and tomorrow night when the sun goes down, you will be allowed to purchase leaven if you desire to bring it into your home, but not before then, of course. All right. Okay. So, oh, Rosebud Ministries, honey. Rosebud Ministries. Yes. Fragrant Fridays, the second Friday of each month. And guess what? That's this Friday, Friday, April 14th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can join Prophetess Wright uh, on Facebook. She will go live from the Rosebud Ministries page, which is titled Rosebud Ministries. Or you can always catch her on replays and the videos are, uh, go up to her YouTube page at The Rosebud Ministries. This Friday, you don't want to miss she will be speaking from the topic, you are chosen. And so you don't want to miss that. And in the midst of uh, these appointed times, it's, it's going to be a mighty word from the woman of Yah. Also, remember, you can do donate today via Cash App, or you can go to her website. Right. And if you donate via her website, that's via PayPal. All right. Amen. Amen. One more announcement on tonight or communication. I want you to put this on your calendar. I will be ministering at Grace Congregational uh, Church, uh, Pastor uh, Bishop Walter Turner and his beautiful and lovely wife, uh, Lady Leander Turner, uh, who has invited me uh, to minister on Saturday, May 20th. And so all of those who can join us, and I do mean not just the women, even though it's a women's conference, I would love for this, both the sons and daughters uh, to come out to that. Um, it is Saturday, May 20th at 1130. So we'll be doing some double duty on that Sabbath. I don't take many um, uh, invitations on Shabbat, <laughs> but when Holy Spirit tells me to, I do. And so this is one of those. And so this is Saturday, May 20th. Please mark it on your calendars and let's go and be with Grace Congregational Church. Um, and also on Sunday, May 21st, um, uh, Lady Turner is hosting a brunch. If you are interested, the QR code is there and you can see the information for the women's conference that weekend. And so um, we'll, we'll be talking about it and seeing how many people may want to join for the brunch and see if it's something that uh, we can go to as ladies. Uh, but I, I didn't want to, I don't want to commit everybody to that. I do want to commit you to the Saturday. So please do come out and be with me. Those who cannot be there, please pray for me uh, that Yahweh will lead me. Certainly, I will be speaking on a topic that I can speak on. Okay. Peace in the midst of the storm. I said, oh yeah, that sounds like I need to talk about that. So please um, uh, join me 1130 Saturday, May 20th. They are on Cullen and we'll give the information. We'll put it on the side so you can see it very clearly uh, as you're making your plans to join Amen. us. Amen.
All right. I believe that's it. Amen. Thank you in advance for your support, your prayers, your yes, love. God. Amen. Listen, I want to talk about something today when asking Yahweh, what do you want to say to your kahal? What do you want to say to the gathering of your people during this time? What is it that um, you want to um, provide for them uh, as we are walking out first fruits to Shavuot? And I kept asking because different things were coming to me. And when I got to the ending of what was coming to me, what I heard was stay the course. So tonight I want to encourage you through the word about staying the course. Yes, you're probably saying probably just in week one of <laughs> first fruits to Shavuot. Yeah. But if I did a poll, if I put the, y'all know we do the polls, you know, we put them up there and you can answer the question. If I were to ask you, if you're walking through something in the very first week of uh, the uh, our stepping up and stepping out of uh, first fruits through to uh, Shavuot, I'm sure that a lot of hands would be raised. And so I know we're facing things. Um, amen. <laughs> amen. Uh, I, I know a lot of things are going on. And I thought about something that Apostle said when this, um, this word came to me is that the enemy does not, he doesn't wait till the ending of a thing to try to distract you, to try to kill, steal, and destroy. This is his modus operandi, if we believe the scripture, to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And so anytime Apostle is teaching from Bereshit, he begins to talk about how Hasatan started in the garden in the beginning. And so we see him, you know, um, embodied as, you know, uh, a serpent in Bereshit. But by the time we get to Revelation, we see him as a dragon, you know. And so the thing is, that means that there's been progression in his boldness and how he's presenting himself. The scripture says that he is as a roaring lion. He's not able to do anything to us really, y'all, without Yahweh's permission. We see that throughout mm -hmm. the scripture, you know, that he has to ask permission for anything. And so if Yahweh allows something, then we have to know that there's a plan behind what he allows. That's right. And so That's right. in what you're walking through in this very moment, I've come to you as a woman of Yah, as a daughter of the king, with permission and authority. Thank you for the reminder, Minister Ward. With the permission and authority. Uh, that Yahweh has given me to release this word to stay the course, stay the course, saints, through this process. Mm -hmm. I cannot tell you that things are going to get easier because the reason why I can't say that is because when you are building up to go to get a harvest, even in the natural, when the time is coming leading up to the harvest, Sometimes it's the hardest time. That's right. Sometimes it's the most discouraging time. Sometimes it is a time that you begin to question whether or not Yahweh really did speak that you have a harvest because of the pressure, because of things that begin to happen. The uh, things I always see during this time, presentations from the enemy that are false, mm -hmm. false accusations, you know, cropping up. Things that are happening in your life, people talking about you, they're lying on you, they're doing things. I'm trying to bring it to you in a way that you understand. Things are said, things are done towards you that you don't understand. And uh, confusion tries to rise up in relationships, whether they're marital or not. And I always see an increase of that during Yahweh's appointed times. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is to discourage us to displace us mm -hmm. from what Yahweh wants us, where the course he wants us to be on. Remember when, when someone, if, if you think about it from a scientific perspective, displacement is just like if you were in a tub. If you, when you run the water for your, uh, in your bathtub, when you sit in the tub, water is displaced from the place that it is because you have entered the tub, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's a change in situation and circumstance right. that displaces the water. 
Now, let me give you something that you may not have heard that term from a scientific term, but you've heard it when we have trauma, like hurricanes, mm -hmm. storms, what happens? They say that the residents of that city were what? Displaced, okay? So there's a displacement when trials and when um, uncomfortable situations are introduced to us. And so the question is, when the uncomfortable situations are introduced and trials and things come and situations to uh, make us lose our focus, will we give in to the displacement or will we defy the displacement and stay the course? So tonight I'm encouraging you to stay the course. Amen. Stay the course. Don't get off track. Whatever Yahweh told you at the beginning of this process, he will do just what he said he will do, Apostle, because he is who he says he is. He will do what he said he will do because he is who he says he is. And so he's not a man that he should lie, Numbers right, 23 and 18. Right. He's not the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, will he not do it? If he spoke it, will he not make it good? So our expectation is from him and our requirements are for him what he is prompt to come through on his promises. And so tonight I've come to encourage you to stay the course in the midst of it all. Amen. So let's go to the next slide so that we can remind ourselves while we're staying the course, okay? So as the sun is going down tonight, we enter into day five. Shavuot is May 28th. That means five days, we're going into the fifth day, we have, will have completed when the sun goes down, yes. four days, which means we have 46 more days. And Holy Spirit keeps telling me over and over, you still have time. You still have time. He keeps telling that to me in my personal life. So I want to tell you, you still have time. I think sometimes when we get underway with the counting of the Omer, we kind of think that this is the time to coast and that we should have done everything by day one. Yeah. But really, this is the time to press into what the Father promised us mm -hmm. and what he may continue to speak to us about during these days. And so, and, and I'm sure he will. I, I know he will. Uh, keep speaking to us. So remember at a bead, we reap the barley harvest. That's okay. Right. That's, right. That's at the beginning of the year. We are almost in the second month, believe it or not, we're going into the second month soon. And so if that's the case, then, and I get excited about the second month and you're going to see why when we, we start studying this out, but um, it is imperative that we understand the cycle and the pattern of Yah during the second month so that we can receive what it is that our ancestors received in the in those uh in the those patterns in those times. Now I don't do no spooky stuff with ancestors. I don't pray to them. I don't worship them. I bring that up because what Yahweh has done in the past is his track record. And if he did it before, he will do it again because he is who he says he is. And sometimes we miss those patterns of what has occurred in the past that it can actually happen for us in the present day. I believe, Apostle, that this has been the biggest trick of the enemy on the saints to disregard and disallow and even disavow the, the old covenant, if you will, that we call it that, the Old Testament is that the, the original covenant that Yahweh made with Abraham, if we don't understand the ins and outs of what Father was saying, then we will surely miss what he was saying in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. Y'all want me to keep going? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Yeah, they, they <laughs> drill these books of the Bible in us as children. So you will miss what the father is saying in the renewed covenant, if you miss what he said in his original testament to us, okay? You won't see where the connection is and you will be living off of a partial promise instead of a full promise that Yahweh has given to us. That's right. And so if you want the fullness, then you need to understand that there are patterns that were set up before the foundation of the world for your life That's right. in this That's time. Right. Can, I, can I say this? Yes. It, sure. You know, you, you talk about the promise. The, the thing is, you know, if we're not getting what Yah is saying to us in, like you say, in the renewed covenant, 
then our problem will be bigger than our promise. Exactly. Exactly. Our, our circumstances and see, mm -hmm. all those things will will always it will eclipse it, it. it will enlarge it will be so large that exactly. we've not seen mm -hmm. the promise, and so we will always be on the problem instead of going into the promise. Exactly. You know, Apostle, I think about that in my life before I realized that us following the commands of Yah was always the instruction. So I always, I, growing up and being taught replacement theology, which means that the church or, you know, everybody who got saved after Yeshua yeah. replaced Israel. Yes. So I grew up with that teaching. And when I have to be honest, when I became an adult, that teaching gave me issues. That's right. And the reason why it gave me issues is because I started thinking about all the if scenarios well, what if that happened? Would I not have the opportunity to get saved? I felt like, like a second-class citizen. I felt like, you know, I was the plan B, if you yeah, will. Yeah. I thought, well, he didn't have an original plan for me. It was only because he was rejected by the Yehudim mm -hmm. that I got an opportunity. <laughs> but when I read That's that true. scripture, because all of that is untrue, y'all. Right. When I read the scripture that Yeshua said he came for the lost house of Israel, mm -hmm. then I had to start saying, wait a minute now, that means he had a plan from the very beginning right. for those who were scattered to come and be in a place where they would understand his instructions and follow his instructions. So I say to you, you're not a, you're not a plan B. Right. Yahweh didn't send you into the earth, you know, uh, because, well, I ran out of options. You have a specific purpose in the earth. You are called to the kingdom for a purpose and everything, this is the thing that really makes me well up and, and makes me really understand the sovereignty of Yahweh is that in, before I ever entered into the earth, he knew the yes. timing that he wanted me to come into the earth. He knew the timing that he wanted you to come into the earth right. and he put everything in place so that everything you walk through up to this moment would get you to this moment. That's right. He is just that kind of Yah. He can look at everybody's scenarios all at the same time. And mm -hmm. even when I disobeyed, even when I would not hear his voice, even when I made him shame, even when I didn't do what was right, he made a way for me to repent and return to him. And that's what we have to look at, that this going from first fruits to Shavuot, y'all, is not just about counting some days. Right. This is about us maturing in Yah. Right. We, it's, it's about us repositioning in areas mm -hmm. where we have been immature, where we have not given ourselves to Yah in the way that we should. It's an opportunity for us to understand our purpose better. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity for us to understand Yahweh's plan better. It's, it's an opportunity for us to understand it, period, if we don't have an understanding of it. That's right. So it's important that you take intentional steps. Remember right. the word from Shabbat. That's right. That's right. Be intentional. This is an intentional believer's journey if you want it to, to yield the harvest that Yah has for it to yield. I can tell you the, the time that I spent being a farmer in training, <laughs> yeah. that if you take your eyes off the harvest and you're not intentional, you may lose some of your crop. That's right. That's right. If you get too undisciplined, yeah. and I don't want to get ahead of myself because yeah. we have some scriptures coming. Yeah. If we get too undisciplined, we can lose the entire crop. That's right. That's why we can't look at it now and say, well, I don't really know what Yahweh is doing because everything is going haywire. Mm -hmm. This is why I'm telling you, stay the course, hold the course, hold the profession of your faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the counter of the counting of the Omer as is uh, born out in the scripture for us, counting up to Shavuot, you know, this is an intentional journey for the believer. And so you see that the there's a ripening of the wheat. And this is what I love about Yahweh. And at the end, we will have what we need 
to present the offering that we need to offer to Yah. Let, let me give you what why I'm saying that. You see at the end that the bread is offered to Yah. That's because that's what he said that he wants in the offering. If you go back and read even in Leviticus and different places about um, from, from first fruits to Shabbat. Oh, and so it's imperative that we understand that Yahweh is giving us the harvest for what he's requiring, not only on Shabbat, but even beyond Shabbat. Sometimes you feel like you just don't have what it takes. Okay, let me speak about Marcelia. Sometimes I feel like I don't have what it takes to do what Yahweh has told me that I must do. Even if it's time, I might feel like, I, okay, Yahweh, with your ability, I have the ability to do it. But when am I going to get the opportunity to, to do it? But I want you to notice something, and I was intentional about my wording. It's a feeling. It's not truth. Mm -hmm. It's just a feeling. I feel like I don't have it. <laughs> but that's a feeling. And we already know what feelings will get us, right? Because it's in the seat of the soul, in the mind, the will, of, and the emotions. It's in that heart that's wicked and deceitful mm -hmm. that needs to be renewed by the spirit of Yahweh. Right. And so I might feel like I can't do it, but with Yahweh, I can do all things. Yeshua said it like this with man, sure enough, it's impossible. But with Elohim, all things mm -hmm. are possible. So come on, let's stay the course. Come on, let's advance because uh, my time is going to run out uh, before I know it. And so let's go to Hebrews. 12 verses one through two. We're going to have apostle will read some and I will read some. All right. So that we can get to uh, where we need to go in a timely manner. Okay. Apostle, you have Hebrews 12, one through two. Can you do that one? And I'll do Galatians. Okay. And then if you'll get Isaiah and I'll get James. Okay? okay. So Galatians, you can go ahead and start bookmarking. If you're doing it on your, in your Bible, your actual paper Bible. 12. Yes, verses one and two. Or if you want to do it in your um, in your app, you can do that as well. Amen. All Hebrews right. 12, one yes, and two sir. says, we too, then having so great a cloud of witnesses yes, all around us, yes, sir. let us lay aside every weight and the sin and the sin, and the sin which so easily entangles us. Yes. And let us run with endurance the yes. race set before us. Yes. Looking to the prince and the perf and perfecter of our belief, Yeshua. Yes. yes, yes, yes. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the stake, having despised the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. So we see that we are being admonished by the apostle Paul. Look, lay aside the weight and the sin. What does this scripture tell us then? It tells us that there are things that are just weights that can lead to sin. So this is why we have to be intentional. And then there's sin, that's sin. And what is sin, prophetess, is transgression of the law. That's right. Do you know that's what the Bible uh, gives a definition of sin is the transgression of Yahweh's instructions his teachings for us. So this is why Apostle and I are driving home that no matter if it's during the appointed times, if it's on a Shabbat, which is an appointed time, if it's during the time, or, or if it's in the other 365 days of the year on the Gregorian calendar, what are you doing about the instructions that Yahweh has given you? So are you following them? Are you being conditioned by the Holy Spirit to follow instructions. When you have little children, right? What are you doing when you are telling them, no, that's hot. Don't touch that. Don't run in the street. You know what you are doing? You are conditioning them to understand your voice when you are telling them to do something and to not do something. So that when you say, don't go in that room, you have already conditioned them over the years that you mean business. This is why follow through on all those things that when a child doesn't do what you tell them to do, that you make a course correction, 
you stop what you're doing and you say, oh no, we have to get this correct. Because otherwise, if you allow children to be unruly, then when you try to pull them back at 15 and 16, you have waited too late. The same thing is with us in relationship with Yah. He is doing things to condition us to hear his voice and to obey and honor what he's telling us to do. Because like my dad would say, don't treat me well on my birthday or whatever day, you know, of the year. And then treat me like the devil the rest of the year. He used to actually say that to us, right? And I understand now as a grown-up what he meant is that this has to be something, you love me today, love me tomorrow when it's not my born day. You love me today, then love me in three weeks when I tell you you can't go to that football game. If you love me today, it's, it's a conditioning of how we are thinking towards our heavenly father. And so Apostle Paul said, look, let's, let's lay aside the weight because guess who else made sure that he fell in line with the instructions of Yah, Yeshua, right? And this is who we look to, to ensure that we stay in the race. It's a race. Stay the course of the race. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's move to the next scripture, because again, I want us to have some time to talk about this. The scripture says this, and I'm going to go a little bit further than seven, just because I want to show you how Apostle Paul brings this all together. He says, for in Messiah Yeshua, I'm sorry, no, let's say that. For in Messiah Yeshua, verse six of Galatians five, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any strength, but belief working through love. You were running well. Who held you back from obeying the truth? Yes. Who held you back? The, that persuasion does not come from him who calls you. So, uh, and then he says this in verse nine, a little leaven leavens all the lump. Oh man, Apostle Paul, you just gonna throw that in right there? Okay, let's talk about this. He is saying in Messiah Yeshua, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any strength. What is he saying? A lot of people argue that he's saying, you don't, you know, you don't need to be circumcised and all of this. But y'all know what Apostle Paul was really saying? that the strength is in belief, it's in faith. Because if you have faith working through love, you will do what the father tells you to do. If it's circumcision, if it's keeping his commands uh, by uh, the appointed times, Apostle Paul is trying to get a word across to the people that they can't just cross off of a list. Just like you can't say, well, I showed up for Passover. All right, done. I showed up for, hey, list seven days without leaven, hmm, done. You know, let me do this side, I'm left-handed, right? So done, okay, look, what they doing now? Uh, Not what we doing, what they doing now? We got how many days to Shabbat? Okay, then I'm gonna check that off my list and I would have done what the father want me to do. So where's my harvest? Where is it? Uh -huh. Not understanding that it's the process of trusting Yah, of believing what he's spoken. Because if you believe he is who he says he is, you will do what he is commanding for you to do in this time. That's right. So you can, Apostle and I were having a conversation about this earlier. See, we can't do everything we want to do all the other days of the year. And then we show up on the appointed times and expect Yahweh to move heaven and earth for us. That includes Shabbat. We haven't done everything we wanted to do the other six days of the of the week. Yahweh, who? Who's that? Yeah. Yahweh. Okay, I, I'll pick him up on Friday night at sundown to Saturday night on sundown. But baby, Sunday through Friday to sundown is all about me, baby, and what I want to do and how I want to live my life. Because see, I'm free. And then they're going to use a scripture on you. Because yeah. whom the sun set free. <laughs> <laughs> it's free. They do it. They, they do it in a heartbeat. Oh my goodness. Instead of saying, no, 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 I'm I, I'm a bond servant. I'm a bond servant. I, I, I'm under the master. Whatever he tells me to do, yeah. that's what I'm gonna do. Mm -hmm. See, if we live our life, you know, uh Pastor Little, who just recently transitioned, our pastor actually with me and Apostle met. 
um, our pastor, the, the pastor that was our pastor in Austin, or in Round Rock, if I'll be uh, yeah. specific, he used to say things like this. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand because I was not conditioned to understand what he was saying. Y'all know what Pastor Little used to teach us? He taught us that if we were living a righteous life, and if we were living in right standing, we wouldn't have to pray for traveling grace. That's right. And I would be looking, y'all be looking like this in him. I, I was in my 20s. I, I, was, I was looking at him like, you should always pray for, I'd be on these roads, Pastor. You should always be praying for traveling grace. He said, if we live the righteous life, we wouldn't have to worry about somebody putting something in our food or having to bless the food and do, oh no oh, pastor you done lost me there now. <laughs> he's gonna be crazy out here you know and that's that's how i respond you know 20s y'all 20s so this was almost 30 years ago we're knocking on 30 years ago and i understand finally what he was saying if we are in right standing with yah all the time, every day, there are certain things that will not be able to penetrate the hedge of protection that surround us because we are totally, completely covered by the obedience to his instructions. Now I understand it. I didn't understand it back then, but he was teaching that 30 years ago. He wasn't a, a, a Torah keeper or anything, but Yahweh gave him the revelation that if we would keep the instructions all the time, not just when we come to service, mm -hmm. oh, I want to be used. Mm, I want to be used. But every other day you want to be used by the enemy or, uh, baby, I got to lay my religion down. I don't know what people say these days, but when I was younger, they would say, I'm going to lay my religion down, tell you what I got to tell you, and I'm going to pick it back up. You know, so whatever is said in these days, I don't know if they do all that. I think they might just tell you all. But anyway, yeah. it's, it's just, it's imperative that we understand that if we are going to be who Yahweh called us to be year round, mm -hmm. then we're going to have to lay aside every weight and the sin. We're going to have to understand that this is through belief, working through love. That's right. We're going to have to understand we can't let anything hold us back from obeying the truth, Right. And th this is one thing I want to say, because people be saying, you know, uh, different things. Scripture, the scripture here, Galatians 5 and 8, I can tell you is a truth. It says that persuasion that's trying to get you to do something against the truth of Yah, whatever Yah is telling you to do, that persuasion does not come from him who calls you. That's right. So if you're wrestling with who's persuading you, look at what they're trying to persuade you to do. That's right. And you will know where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. This is why we have to have an understanding of what Yahweh is speaking to us in these last and evil days. Come on, apostle. Let's go to Isaiah 48, 28 through 31. Praise Yahweh. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Yes, sir. Verses 28 through 31 says, did you not know? Come on. Have you not heard mm -hmm. the everlasting Elohim, mm -hmm. Yahweh, the creator of the end of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. No, we do His understanding is unsearchable. Yes. Verse 29 says, he gives power to the faint. Yes. He gives power. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Yes. Verse 30 says, even you shall faint and be weary, and young men stumble and fall. Yes. But verse 31 says, but those who wait on Yahweh renew their strength. They raise up the wings like eagle, eagles. Mm -hmm. They run and are not weary. They walk and do not faint. Listen, we, we can't. The thing is, when we're looking at these scriptures, don't just glaze over it and say, man, I've heard that scripture all my life. Yeah. I've this or that or what have you. We need to understand that this is a powerful word from Isaiah to encourage us in the last in evil days. He tells us he gives power to the faint. And this is what we need to start thinking about. Father, you promised that you would give power to me when I'm faint, when I'm weak, 
when I don't know where to turn. You said you would give me power. And so we, we have to press into that power from Yahweh. Amen. And those who have no might, he increases strength. In a time where you feel like you're losing strength or you don't have any strength, begin to speak over your body, begin to speak over your mind, begin to speak over your soul and say, no, the strength of Yahweh is my portion. That's right. I'm not a weakling. I'm not a wimp. I have strength from, from him. And then, of course, the ending scripture says those who wait. So those, you know, most times when I grew up, I thought that meant you just wait like you're waiting in a line. But wait in this case means to serve That's right. those who serve Yahweh. You're going to renew your strength. So in the meantime, serve Yahweh, serve him with gladness. The psalmist says, amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. All of those things. Do that because of your love for Yahweh. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now listen to James 1 and 12. I think I may do more than that. So y'all hold on. No, let, let's stick with 12 because I, I want to get to these other scriptures, okay? Uh, James 1 and 12 says, blessed is the man who does endure trial. For when he has been proved, he shall receive the crown of life, which the master has promised to those who love him. Holy Spirit, I, at first I was going to remove this from the list. I said, I don't know if you're saying that, he said, yeah, I'm saying that. He said, put that right on that, on that slide. I said, okay, father, give me, what are you saying? Yeah. He said, my people are always thinking about, and I know we were, a lot of us, let me speak about me, was, were raised to think about what Yahweh is going to give us in the great by and by. Yeah. And I understand that. I understand that being in the culture, but really father is saying, listen, even in this life, I'm going to give you authority. I'm going to give you power. Mm -hmm. Luke 10, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means will hurt you. This is an opportunity for us to tap into another place and dimension of authority in Yah. So don't just kind of glaze past these promises saying, well, yeah, that's cool, but that's in the life to come. But what about the authority he has promised us in the earth? And if you want to know what that is, go back to Genesis 1 and 26, where he gives us dominion. Right. He gives us dominion to, to, to have dominion in this earth as Yahweh has given, gives us a life of authority that we can stand up and say we are doing what the father has called us to do. Amen. And we will not turn aside from what he has given us to do. Amen. 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 Come on, let's go to the next slide. So Matthew 24, 7 through 13, apostles going to get that one for us. And I'm going to get Psalm, the Psalm. Uh, I apologize. I should just say Psalm. It is only one Psalm. <laughs> Psalm, so it's a book of Psalms, but that particular one is only one. All right. So Apostle, you ready? 13. 7 through 13. Yes, sir. Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse starting at verse 7, says, For nations shall rise against nation and reign against reign, yes. and there shall be scarcities of food and deadly diseases and earthquakes in places. Verse 8 says, and all, and all these are the beginning of birth pain. Then they shall deliver you up to affliction and kill you. And you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Verse mm -hmm. 10 says, and then many shall stumble and mm -hmm. they shall deliver up one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise, shall rise up and lead many astray. And because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many shall become cold. Verse 13 says, but he who shall have endured to the end shall be saved. Amen. I know, I know y'all. If you look at this scripture, does this, doesn't this sound like a time that we're living in? That nation is rising up against nation? I know that they kind of play it down in the news and then it comes up again. 
But do you know that, you know, Ukraine and Russia is still at it? Mm -hmm. There's war in Israel. That's right. You know, there's, it's, it's different things happening. And when they want to bring it to the forefront, you know, and try to bring fear, that's what they do. But those of us in the media, I mean, but those of us who are prayer warriors and intercessors, mm -hmm. we understand we're praying. And, and as Psalm says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This is where apostle when apostle uh, declares peace within your walls and prosperity within your palaces, your cit citadels, you know, that the peace of Yah be within Israel. And as we pray for the peace of Yah to be within Israel, he will bring peace to our homes, amen, and to our hearts. And so there's nations rising up against nation, but this is not for a time for us to be fearful. That's right. It's a time for us to, to tell our children, listen, this is what the Bible said would happen. What we're experiencing is what the Bible said would happen. So now we have to train up and raise up warriors who will be able to endure to the end because the scripture says we have to always see how he words this, how Yahweh words this. He says, he, but he who shall have endured past tense. That means you have to get all the way through. You can't get just 99 and a half percent. You got to get to the hundred percent of endurance. You're the one that's going to be saved. Okay. And look at this. Verse 12 tells it all. And, and is anybody seeing the increase of lawlessness? People are definitely not uh, uh, really staying within the boundaries of the governmental law, mm -hmm. let alone Yahweh's law, you know, and it's increasing more and more that people are disregarding the instructions of Yah and they're disregarding the instructions that are in the land. But that's what happens when you disregard Yahweh's law, then it becomes very evident that you've been conditioned that's right. to disobey any authority. Mm -hmm. And so then you become lawless in the land that you're living. So you're not, you're not paying attention to Yahweh's instructions, nor the instructions in the land. And both, if we like it or not, not all, not all of the laws in the land. Let me preface my statement with that. But some of the laws in the land, let me give you some examples. Some of the laws in the land, like the speed limit, are set to protect us. Amen. Lights, when they are red, is not a suggestion. Most times we think yellow lights are suggestions. Could slow down or maybe I speed up and I make it before it turns red. But really, yellow is caution. You might want to stop where you are. Everything don't get hit by somebody coming, you know, it's, it's a caution. And so it's imperative that we are paying attention to the signs That's and right. what father is speaking. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. So Psalm 18. Let me read Psalm 18. Sure. I read Psalm 18, starting at verse 29 and 30. It says, for with you, I run against a band and with my Elohim, I leap over a wall. The L, his way is perfect. The word of Yahweh is proven. He is a shield to all who take refuge in him. You know, all I can say is say a lot to that. What could I add to that? That's right. What in the world could I add to that? That's right. He oh, is yeah. who he's, let me just say, he is who he says he is. Let me encourage you that if you're feeling weak, with you, what does it say, Apostle? With you, Yah. Uh -huh. I can run. I, I can do what I need to do. Run through truth, leap over walls, whatever it is that I need to do, I can do it because you are with me. And listen, he goes in to say that the word, every word of Yah, this is what we have to depend on in these last and evil days. Come on. Romans 5. Yes, sir. Starting at the first verse, it says, therefore, having been declared right by belief, Yes. We have peace with Elohim through our master, Yeshua Messiah, Come on. through whom also we have access by belief into this favor in which we stand. And we exult in the expectation of the esteem of Elohim. Verse three says, and not only this, but we also exult in pressures, knowing that pressure works endurance. And endurance, approvedness, and approvedness expectation. 
Verse five says, an expectation does not disappoint because the love of Elohim has been poured out in our hearts by the set apart spirit, which was given to us. Y'all, this is rich. I'm trying to tell you, Yahweh oh, yeah. gave these scriptures to encourage us in this time. Look, the endurance that we need, the pressure that is being presented, that if we can still exalt Yahweh, if we can still praise Yahweh in the midst of the pressure we're under. Yeah. The pressure is going to work that endurance, mm -hmm. y'all. And then endurance, approvedness, our character. That's right. Because we're going to need character in these last and evil days mm -hmm. to rise up and be who Yahweh has called That's us right. to be. That's right. And then approvedness, our character brings about expectation in the hope that Yahweh is going to do exactly what he said he would do. That's right. Remember, belief or faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. It's about our expectation that Yahweh mm -hmm. is who he says he is, and he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And expectation does not disappoint. Listen, no. think about the harvest that Yahweh has promised you and stay the course. Amen? Because, look, look and I love it. He then talks about because the love of Elohim has been poured out in our hearts by the set apart spirit, which has been given to us. So as we're marching up to Shavuot with the culmination of Holy Spirit being poured out on us in a new way, in a greater way than we've ever experienced, Yahweh is telling us, look, hold the course, stay the course. Because the love of Yah has been poured out. Why the love? Why didn't he use another, another fruit of the spirit? Why didn't he say because the joy, you know, of Yah has been poured out? You know why? Because he knew that according to 1 John and according to the word of Yah, according to who he is, perfect love cast out all fear, mm -hmm. right? So if we have the love of Yah, the fear will try to rise up tell you, I don't know why you're doing all that. They telling you to pray every day. Girl, you better get them extra 20 minutes of sleep. You know how it is at that job, child. You need to get all the rest you can. Or you know how it is being a mom, being a dad. You know, you need them extra. They may not need that extra 20 minutes, but you need that. You know, all of those things to put fear in you mm -hmm. that if you do what Yahweh told you to do, you're either going to miss out on something or you or, are you going to you're going to miss out like on that 20 minutes of rest. And Yahweh saying, no, press through it because my love is there for you to cast out the fear, all right? So fear wants to creep in because it is against the love of Yahweh, amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the final scripture, and then we're gonna open it up for conversation, y'all. First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. I pray this blessing, challenge and change. Uh -huh. Verse 24, first Corinthians, the ninth yeah. chapter says, do you not know that those who run in, in a race indeed all run, but one received the prize, run in such a way as to attain it. Verse 25 says, and everyone who competes controls himself in every way. Now they do it to receive a corruptible crown, <laughs> but we for an incorruptible crown. Yes. Therefore, I run accordingly, not with uncertainty. Thus, I fight, not as one who beats the air. No, sir. You know, the, my God. But I treat my body severely uh, and make it my slave, lest having proclaimed to others I myself might be rejected. I tell you now, this is the scripture right here that Yahweh will convict me in any time because what Apostle Paul is telling us that even as we're running this race, there are people, y'all, who compete in Olympics. Mm -hmm. Remember, Olympics come from the Greek culture and it's ancient. Is we think because you know it's been done in our time that is new, but they were having Olympics back then. So he understood. Remember, Apostle Paul was speaking to some Greeks, so he needed to be able for them to understand where he That's was right. coming from. And so he began to say, Look, I treat my body severely, like I can't do what everybody does, mm -hmm. I can't be where everybody is. Why? Because Look, I'm telling everybody else to do what's right in Messiah, and I don't want to be rejected myself in all of this. So in this, it's imperative. I always talk about the windmill fighting. 
You got your head down and you just swinging at the air. Y'all, I didn't get that from myself. I got that from the scripture. When Holy Spirit said, girl, stop that windmill fighting. That's what Apostle Paul is talking about. That you, you, we're not fighting, not as one who beats the air. No, but we are putting our bodies, our minds, every part of us under the subjection of Yahweh to be disciplined. That's right. Now, people who do this as for sport, they're doing it for an incorruptible reward, right? It's not, I'm sorry, corruptible. It's something that's worldly, it's secular, you know? That's right. But what we're doing this for is for Yahweh to be pleased with our lives that we will gain what he has promised us an incorruptible crown. Amen? And, and last thing I'm going to say, every time I see this scripture running away uh, as to obtain it, verse 24, 1 Corinthians 9, in the King James Version or one of the versions I remember, it says, run to win it. And, and this is what it's saying to obtain it. Y'all, I run a race to win it. I, I run to win it. I'm, look, I'm in it to win it, Apostle. That's right. That's I'm right. not in it to lose. I'm not in it to come out mediocre. I'm in it to win. Yes. At bet, mediocre at bet. I'm not in it for that. So when you come into this intentional walk up to Shabbat, be intentional to win what Yahweh has promised. Amen. And that is that harvest. Amen. All right. So come on. Let's talk about it. Come on, talk to us. Any questions, comments about the teaching? Amen. Come on, you can unmute yourself and ask a question or give a comment. Good evening. Good evening. We're coming to you, uh, Doyle Nation. Come on, Kiri Nation. I just want to say that this is a great teaching. Uh, stay the course. That's a very good subject. It's not always easy to do. And we need this confirmation to re relearn what we already think and uh, um, are not sure of. Because in today's society, media, even in uh, other or other spiritual teachings that you may listen to, it does try to evoke fear in you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's reasonable. So we need this teaching right here to get it down into our spirit so that we won't have that fear because fear is not of Yahweh. It's not. So I thank you so much for this teaching. Bless you, Sister Kiri. Listen. One thing that we have to understand is that Yahweh has a conditioning and the enemy has a conditioning. And if we fall for the conditioning of what we see as the headlines, we will always walk in fear. And the reason why, as I said earlier, the enemy wants us to be in fear is because it, go against the, it goes against the love of Yah. Lo Yahweh's presence demands that fear leaves it doesn't it doesn't say oh fear's in the room okay we can coexist let's coexist no when Yahweh shows up fear has to go because he is love think about the scripture that says uh, again first John 4 beloved let us love one another because love is of Elohim and everyone who love is is born of Elohim and knoweth Elohim he that loveth not knoweth not love because why? Elohim is love. So his very presence is, and this is why the fear tries to come because his very presence demands and it commands fear to leave our lives. And so if we've been conditioned that fear is just a normal thing, then we won't understand that actually love, who is Yahweh Elohim, casts that all, all out in him just showing up in us, all right? So thank you for that, woman of y'all. Come on, Dawn Nation. I was gonna say, I agree with Sister Janine, right on time, uh, stand the course. Uh, one of the things I was literally just having, a, and so I don't believe it's not a, a coincidence why I, you know, this topic came about. I was literally just talking to one of my, um, my, my sisters about 
this, uh, dealing with the fear and staying the course on how just the level that I have, how far I've come on the spiritual level in order to stay the course. And I remember telling her that, you know, there was a once upon a time where I would always question my, 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 um, my spirituality when it comes to hearing from the father, you know, and because it was always like, I'm thinking that I, I have my relationship with him and I understand what he's trying to tell me. And then when someone comes to him, well, are you sure that's the father? Are you sure that's what, who? And it, it made me question my belief. But when I moved from, from that position, I had to move in order to understand exactly what the father wanted me to go and understand where he was trying to take me and to actually hear his voice clearer than what was what was already coming to me. And I think that's uh, that's the difference. And since I, I did make that transition and moved out of from that underneath that uh, covering, I'm able to say the course and actually able to understand, you know, actually knowing uh, I was telling her, you know, uh, the father said, my sheep know my voice. I actually know the father's voice. So all the things that were coming to me and trying to like contradict what I already knew, you know, that's what, that's what made the difference man. when I was like, oh, you know what? I do know, you know, I do know that's the father's talking to me. And now I, I'm more assertive when it comes to even witnessing other people when they're like, well, how do you know that, that the father's talking to you? You know, how do you know that he's speaking to you? How do you know he's dealing with you? And you know, when you, when you, they like say, when you know better, you do better. And I'm learning mm -hmm. and I'm growing, you know, but I, I'm, I agree with Jane right on time. I really appreciate this, uh, this message. Praise Yahweh. Thank you so much for sharing. You know what, Sister Shonda, here's the thing. When Yeshua came into the earth, and this is why these times are so important that we really dig our heels into the word. When these times come, we have to see that Yahweh is building us up to speak with, with authority and, and with not, not with our own authority, but with his authority. And when you look at the life of Yeshua, this is one of the things that truly offended the people of his day. If you go and you look at the scripture, you see that they would be upset because of the authority that he spoke in. And so they were always trying to, oh, oh no, sir, bring that down a notch. Bring that down a notch. You bring that down. You know, they saying this to Yeshua. You need to, uh, wait, he told me he the son of who? Ain't that Joseph's, boy, ain't that the carpenter? Y'all, and it's the same, we walk through the same thing. Ain't that Joseph and Sally's daughter? Child, child who she think? She up here prophesying. And I used to see that girl with them ponytails running around the block. Yeah, 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 you did. And now I'm here and I am who Yahweh says I am and I'm not taken down. And if perhaps as I'm walking this journey, Yahweh has to do a course correction. Trust me, I am not going to stop declaring his word to come down to where you are. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to back down. And this is what the enemy gets upset and people get upset to see you. So they start saying, well, how you know you're hearing from, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same spirit that Miriam had with Moses, that Aaron had with Moses, you know, uh, child, let me tell you, y'all know the, the modern day when they say, uh, I don't know who the pastor think he is. He, they put on their pants one leg at a time. That's what they used to say when I was growing up. All right. And so it's, she was saying the same thing. She was like, uh, excuse me, uh, the father speaks to me too. But this is because we don't understand authority in its place. And when Yahweh is giving you the authority in that moment to speak what he's told you to speak, then everybody just needs to listen yeah. and tune in and say, father, what are you saying? Mm -hmm. instead of being so quick to say, well, well how you know he talking, you know? And so, but that's a conditioning. That's a conditioning. And so it's good to hear that you're overcoming that and you've overcome that mm -hmm. because it's imperative in this day and age. Everybody, I always say this, you know, they'll come up with a master class in a heartbeat, in a heartbeat. And the first thing when somebody comes up with the master class, now that they've turned this, you know, this term, I go to see some credentials. Please don't tell me you teaching a master class and you don't have no credentials. Because people think because they can speak with authority 
The, but that's the son of Ske, sons of Skeva. Skeva. Mm -hmm. They spoke with authority, but they didn't have authority. And you got to be able to discern the difference. You know, they they were talking about in the name of of, of the one that 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 Paul preached, and er, er, you know, they don't know you sure for themselves. So this is why when we speak in authority, we have to know it's Holy Spirit speaking right. through us and not ourselves. And this is where Yahweh is taking us so that when we speak with authority, when people question it, you do like the master do, does. He had an answer for them. They didn't like it, but he had an answer for them, That's you right. know, and he went on to do what the father told him to do. Thank you so much again for sharing. Come on, Elder Mitchell. Good evening, everyone. Great evening, dear. Uh, awesome teaching tonight. Awesome, Listen. awesome. Uh, stay in the course. Prophets, you know you heard from the Father on this. Praise uh, you. Because as you know, as you say, we're all going through something as we're making this journey. And the scripture that you brought up tonight in Matthew uh, 24, the 13th verse, I never saw it with the ED on it either. You know, and we, and we all, we're good to quote, you know, I'm, I'm going to endure to the end. But, you know, when you have that past tense on there, yes, it, it has a whole different perspective. You know, we, we sometimes tend to get in the race with the, with the thinking that we're going to endure. But this says you're going to have to make it all the way through. All the way. Yeah. All the way through. And so I was looking at that. I mean, then you're talking about stay the course. And then you turn around and say, expectation doesn't ex disappoint, you know, and you've y'all been preaching to us to have an expectation. Mm -hmm. And, right. and, and in that now I'm looking at it, my expectation got to be about in being an endurer. <laughs> yes. Not, just not in do a doer. So now, yes. you know, so I can get to the end and not just be thinking I'm in a race and not fully going to make it through. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing, Elder. And yes, that thing really hit me. I was like, yeah, there it is. It's past tense. Just like by the stripes of Yeshua, we were healed. When you start seeing that past tense <laughs> crop up in scripture, you're like, wait a minute, this is already a done deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I have to meet that expectation and that requirement That's right. That's right. of going all the way. So thank you so much for sharing. Come on, right nation. Thank you, Apostle and Prophets, for an awesome lesson on tonight. Uh, this was so on time, Prophets, as we are in this season. I had a conversation this evening with, with a sister uh, in the faith, and I'm telling you, she was so discouraged. Mm -hmm. And I began to open her, let her, uh, told her, I said, okay, let's look at the season that we are in. And I just began to remind her where we are in the biblical calendar, what the enemy is trying and the things that are happening. And so again, encouraging her to stay the course. But I think sometimes when we are, when we um, are in these times, we look in the scripture and see where we are, we can kind of understand what's going on because some we have been so disconnected right from the scriptures so now that we are connecting you say okay i saw this pattern in the scripture and i begin to remind her i said remember when the children of israel came out of egypt yes. remember what happened remember the pharaoh it was yes. a spirit in the land at the time and so just walking her through the timeline mm -hmm. and helping her to okay, come out of this place where you are because she was talking about giving up and what she's been through. She's walked through so much. When I hear a prophet talking mm -hmm. about giving up, I become alarmed and I begin yeah. to pray with her and, and helping her to, to, okay, let's take off this, all this other stuff and let's get to the bottom of it. And I told her, you know, you're going to have to uh, renounce some places and close some doors and just helping her get into that place. Um, and I'm just grateful for this teaching because it helped me, uh, it's helping me even see where we are. I am myself in this walk. You know, uh, the scriptures that you brought out tonight were so great um, about the instructions. What are we doing with the instructions? And so my instruction, you know, for this season was, you know, to be an, an encourager, 
right, to someone else, because we understand when we get teachings like this, this is to help us so we can encourage someone else, because Absolutely. guess what, somebody's going to give you a call, we're all going to get Absolutely. an opportunity to use these lessons to stay the course, so thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, hearing Holy Spirit and giving us this great full meal tonight that we can go on until the end. Amen. Thank you so much, Prophet is right. You know, like I always say, it's lessons and blessings. And it is a blessing for us, but really the lesson should be a blessing for somebody else. And that's what I always desire my life to be a blessing to somebody else because maybe, maybe I didn't stay the course in an area in, in cycles past. And I've been very transparent about that very transparent about it, that Yahweh made promises, your girl, she didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't do what I needed to do to get to the end. And I have been very, very transparent about that. And, but the, you know, the blessing is for me and for the person listening to me is first of all, the scriptures say we overcome by the words of our testimony, by the blood of the lamb. So I'm not going to hide it because I know we overcome through these things, you know? And so the other thing is that for the person who's, who will hear me, they can avoid the traps that I have endured, you know, that I went through and I fell for, I should say, I didn't endure it. I fell for the trick and the trap of the enemy and, and of my flesh that when I got to the harvest, I, I didn't have what it took to actually bring the harvest in. You know, the, the scripture says in, in one of those scriptures, I believe it was, um, uh, was it James or uh, uh, the one that talked about the approvedness was that, um, which one was that, um, that talked about blessed. That was one thing that sometimes we um, we overlook those, those scriptures that command a blessing over us when we endure. It's a blessing in enduring. When you're going through it, it doesn't seem like a blessing. It seems like something else. But when you endure it, there's a blessing. Yeah. When we overcome, it's a blessing because guess what? It's just like anybody who lifts weights. You are pushing to the next level and the next level so you can say that you're in this level or on that level or this level or that level. You know, this is what you're trying to do, Right. And so it's the same thing when we are uh, suffering through resistance. What happens is we keep pressing forward because as we grow and as we get higher and deeper in Yah, we have we have overcome that area. So guess what? When the enemy comes at that level, we've already overthrown him. Mm -hmm. He can't come that way anymore. And so he tries another thing. Then we get built up to overthrow him at that level. And that's why we got to keep on climbing up and going forth for Shabba O. Well, Prophet, as you know, as you, you're talking about those levels, uh, the, scripture, the scripture that you mentioned, that perfect love cast out, yes. which means that the perfection means mature love, yes. which means that you have passed that level so you're mature enough to go to the next level. And so because you understand where you've been, now you know yes. how to overcome those things, even when the enemy tries to throw the kitchen sink, you think that Yahweh has left you out there. He's looking for that maturity in you yes. to, so that you can overcome all those things yes. that the enemy has thrown at you so that you can get to that next level. This is also like you say, when you were in the gym um, and you're working, you don't just go to the gym just to sit there and look at everybody else. No. You go there to work out, to build mm -hmm. your endurance, to build your muscles, to build, mm -hmm. you know, and so if you keep going, you will see the the the, the, the definition yeah. of your own. You see the definition in your leg. You see the definition that you could walk five extra steps or 10 Come extra, on, you can walk a mile, you can walk yes, two miles. Sir. You know, you can see it because now you're mature enough mm -hmm. to understand that Yahweh's love, that he loves you enough, that he's going to protect you. Mm -hmm. Even though, in the, in, like you said, the enemy can't do not one thing to you mm -hmm. without uh, without his his uh, permission. Yahweh's and, but, permission, but yeah, Yahweh mm -hmm. is getting you to this place that you, that you, uh, the maturity in you, you just see that Yahweh is going to just, he's going to, to protect me. He loves me so much that as I'm going from glory to glory, that I'm trusting him. 
Amen. I stopped trusting myself as Amen. far as trying to do it without him. And so a lot of times when we're trying to do it without him, you know, we end up in a place where Every you know, time. It, it, then we get emotional. Every time we try without him. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's, it's so this is why perfect love, it mm -hmm. casts out the mature love of mm -hmm. Yahweh casts out that unbelief. It yes. cast out fear yes. that you're thinking far beyond the, the uh, 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 Hebrews 11 and one says, and belief is the substance of mm -hmm. what is expected. What am I expecting? Mm -hmm. My maturity in Yahweh says that he's going to deliver whatever he said, he goes, whatever he said to me yes. through his word. Yes. And then it goes on to say the proof of what is not seen, yes. which means that stop looking for it with your natural eye. Yes. Yes. Stop trying to figure it out with mm -hmm. your natural eye. You have to get in his, as you're in his presence. This is where maturity comes in. That's right. Because you stop, you're not trying to do it on your own. That's right. You're doing it through him. That's in right. him we move, in him we, we live, and in him and we, we have, have our being. Our being. Yes, and so yes, we have yes. to know that this, this maturity of love, this maturity that is going, that's taken us from dimension to dimension, that's from it. level to level. That's it. In him, that's it. It happens. Yeah. And so we're not scared. That's right. When we get to that next level. Exactly. Because we uh, all the stuff that we defeat, you mean to tell me I'm scared to go and buy, uh, I'm scared to, to, to think about buying another building, to buy mm -hmm. more land? What? No, mm -hmm. Yahweh has already helped me to conquer. Right. Because we trusted him and because we trust him that we know there's so much more that he has for us. And I think, Apostle, that's the big thing that you said. I was just going to say that uh, when you finish that statement and you segue right into it, is that the trick of the enemy is that if we don't conquer at the place where we are, yes. then we can never see conquering at that next place and that next stage. And this is why it's important that we focus on the thing that we're walking through, not on the trial, but on the overcoming and overthrowing of the enemy. Because once we've mastered that, then we master the next step and the next step. So that's why it's imperative that we keep moving forward. Amen. And so thank you to everybody. I see that there were comments in the in the chat. Thank y'all so much for for your feedback on what the father is saying to you from this teaching, because that's where it is. And you have to get it and you have to be able to apply it in your life. Mm -hmm. One last thing I want to say, the scripture I was talking about was the scripture in James. Mm -hmm. James 1 and 12 says, blessed is he. You blessed when you have endured that's e right. ED. Amen. Mm -hmm. You're blessed. And so there's blessing and favor on your life as you do what the father has told you to do. Remember, atonement means, means restoration to favor. Remember that, that this is what the blood of Yeshua has done when he has atoned us. Mm -hmm. And so he's restoring us and has restored us. And now we need to walk out being restored unto favor. Amen. So come on, let's pray in these last couple of minutes that we have together. Thank you all so much for joining us on tonight. And please invite somebody to join in on uh, Shabbat, as well as on next Wednesday for bold. We're going to keep on encouraging you with these lessons and these blessings from Yahweh to keep enduring to the end. Listen, yeah. Yahweh has a great plan for your life and you want to, you want to grab it and you want to do what he's told you to do with the days he's given you in the earth. Amen. So come on, let's go to the father in prayer. Father, we yes. thank you. We praise you. We love you. We adore you. Thank you for these, your precious people. Thank you, thank you for bringing us together, yes. Father, to gather around your word. Father, as we go forth in these last 40, now um, going into the last day of unleavened bread and the fifth day, Father, of counting of the Omer, as we take these days, we have 46 more days if we count today, Father, uh, to, to count up to uh, Shavuot. May we take this with intentionality. May we all be different. May we be transformed, Father, by your spirit, because we are obeying you, not just at Shavuot, not just during this time, but every single day of our lives. If we together as a family, as a Bolin family, 
of we're in our separate locations. We are honoring you and obeying you so that when we come together, that all of that obedience built up together will bring forth, Father, your miracles, your signs, and your wonders for your people. And Father, we thank you for this lesson. Thank you for wording my mouth. I am I am truly your vessel. Whatever you want to say to your people, continue to word mine and apostles' mouths for what your people need for this time. May Father, feed them with the bread of life during this time because Yeshua is the bread of life and breathe on us because you are the breath of life. And so Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We adore you. Encourage each and every one of your believers, Father, to endure and, and, and be an endurer, like my daughter said, and go forth and endure to the end. We thank you. We praise you. We love you. We adore you in the matchless, holy, unbeatable name of Yeshua Hamashiach. We pray. Amen. And Amen. bless Yahweh. Come on, some exit music, sir. There are the ways to give. Thank you for your faithful giving. Continue to give, but also continue to posture yourself to receive. I'm going to stop the recording so you can say shalom if you want to. You can get to it. <laughs>